Well, from a collegiate standpoint, Kale has come to the end of his road. From his freshman year until today, 159 matches, he didn't lose a one. Four times a national champion. Finally, the heavyweights compete. Tommy Rollins of Ohio State and Steve Mako from Iowa. But I have to tell you, we're all just kind of sitting around shaking our heads in disbelief from what we just saw. What an accomplishment. I, not to say we wrestled with words to try to describe it. I think we're still doing the same thing. And you're going to take me down probably and I, get the points. I really think the crowd has a hangover from, you know, the excitement and the adulation that they gave them. But there's two good athletes out here, both young for heavyweight. And what last year was thought to be a maybe a weak weight class at heavyweight, this year it's turned out that it's one of the strongest. They're all young. They're all mobile. And none of them are really head or shoulders above the rest. They have to go out there and earn it. But Rollins lost on the tiebreaker in last year's final to Lockhart of Illinois. And Mako was probably the most heavily recruited athlete in the country this past year. He made his choice from Blair Academy to the University of Iowa. These behemoths are 285 plus. I remember 285. Heck, when I was playing with that brown ball and the white laces, I remember 307. Things have changed, Mr. Blatnick. Yes, they have. And the heavyweights tend now to be a little bit smaller than that 286, but much more mobile. Not the typical push, shove, one move affair, but a lot more motion. Surprised to see two underclassmen here, a freshman and a sophomore? In a way, I am. But at the same time, I'm not because of their talent level. Rollins was here last year. He, this is his second straight final. Coach from Iowa was coached by J Jim Seleski, three-time national champion, and the Ohio State Buckeyes, coached by a guy named Russ Hellickson, silver medalist in 76. He was an 80 Olympian. I had the fortunate time to train. Well, maybe it was a little unfortunate at the time to train with him. Very good wrestler, but he also did the commentary for my match at the Olympics, and then I, I work with him doing Olympic commentary now. You know, as big as these two young men are, uh, I, I take us back to the 125 weight pound classification. The kind of moves we saw then, they're not quite as quick, but they're as agile. And they make the same kind of moves, and they get the same kind of holds as quickly as even the lighter guns. I had a friend who said, heavyweight class is different. And I looked at him, I said, I do the same moves. He looked at me, he goes, no, your weight class is different. But these athletes tend to show that it isn't. They do a lot of the same moves that the lightweights do. It just seems heavyweight's a little more final. You get a guy on your back at heavyweight, it usually ends. Four-time national champion at Blair Academy was Mako. Storied youth career. But he's with the big boys now, and he's showing he can hang with them. Rollins has got his hands full. He does. Uh, they've wrestled three times prior. This is their fourth match. And Rollins is trying to even the score. He's one and two against Mako this past season. Now, both are a little conservative. They haven't taken the amount of shots that they normally do in a match. Mako with a bit of an attempt there, but really didn't commit to the penetration step. And once again, there's a setup, and then you got to get to the hold. And to get underneath your opponent, you need a good penetration step and then the finish. And they haven't really gotten past the setup stage here. There's a shot by Rowan, but he never got to the leg, and Mako was waiting, nearly turned the corner. Did you feel Again. the table just shake here when they both went down? I mean, that's practically 600 pounds of bad behavior right there. And Tommy Rowan with two leg attacks, but never even got to grab the leg of Mako. We're very close. This is many times what happens. Oh, Mako may get him. No, Rowan's able to come up, and now he's got a single. He could get a takedown here in the last 10 seconds. Remember, Roland scored first. Out of bounds. Mako survives. Roland needs to try again. Nine seconds remain. Oh, foot sweep wow. by Mako, but he gives him the leg in the process. Couldn't complete the move quickly enough. No, and Rollins just can't seem to deal with the leverage of that left leg of Mako. He can't pull it in. Mako counters him out. We go to one minute of sudden victory. The first situation. point wins. I really don't know who has the advantage here yet. I, I know that Rollins scored first early on. I don't see any fatigue. Perhaps most evenly matched situation we have seen all day. Now, Rollins seems to me to be a little bit more tired. 
Mako is standing straight up and just driving in the Rollins and pushing them around now. I wonder if Rollins spent himself with those two, three shots at the end of regulation. I got to tell you, Mako had that look when he came out. You know, I, I didn't see him out here when Sanderson made history. He really hid himself. I did, however, see Rollins, and I thought that was very interesting. A uh, crowd yelling here. They don't like to see Rollins push out of bounds. And when I say crowd, I mean those yellow and black Iowa fans that occupy the whole corner of this arena. Mako's victory wouldn't mean a whole lot in the Hawkeye situation as far as team points is concerned. Well, they Minnesota's love a national win champion. That, no, they want cow. a national champion. Yep. And they've had their opportunities today, but haven't been able to come through. Double leg blast attempt by Rollins. No setup really there, and Mako able to counter. Rollins, really a great athlete. Last year, a lot of attacking, a lot of shooting. He really wasn't able to score, but very, very aggressive. Now, Rollins scored first, even though it wasn't two points. Does he have the advantage now as we go to the tiebreak? Uh, here we go. This is the advantage. Green won the coin toss. You can bet Mako's going to choose down. Yep. And once again, Rollins is facing a tiebreaker in the finals of the Nationals, stuck in the top position. What Normally a day this it's has an been. advantage, but 90% of the time they win from the bottom. He's got to ride him. Mako's got to escape. He's got to clear that leg, but Rollins had the leverage there. Now it gets dicey. There's the stalemate. If he does that again, he can hit for stalling, but right now there has been no stalling call. Does Mako need to shoot out with his feet more quickly? Hand control first. When you get the hand control, that frees up your hips to do the movement. Look for him head back, rounded shoulders. His hands will come up to try to intercept Roland's hands. I figured he'd try, just try to right sit now, out. There it is. He can turn him. He's got to bring him back down to the mat. There's the stall call against Rollins. Next one will result in a point. 11 seconds remain. With the way this day has gone, with what we've seen Sanderson accomplish to go to the final 11 seconds to determine a national championship for two underclassmen at one point in time. It's unbelievable. It's the NCAAs. Rollins has got to return him to the mat. Got to return him to the mat. And that's going to do it. Rollins is going to hang on. He's going to win it. Rollins avenges last year's tiebreaker loss from the worst position possible. Unbelievable. On top. I would have given it to Mako, the freshman, right there. A 1-1 tie takes us to the tiebreaker. A stalling caution. Tommy Rollins, the sophomore, beats the freshman as a heavyweight national champion. We'll be back with some final thoughts from Albany, New York, and the NCAAs in a moment.